Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one being the poetry discussion playlist. Number two being the Emily Dickinson playlist, a playlist of all things Emily. Today's poem is the first time that uh, that this is the first time today's poem has appeared on the channel. This is a poem that I think is one you have to be in the mood of losing to read. Uh, so here we are. Now, the poem in question reads as such. It is called, not titled, but called, My Portion is Defeat Today because, well, that's the first line. My portion is defeat today. A paler luck than victory. Less paeons, fewer bells, the drums don't follow me with tunes. Defeat a somewhat slower means, a more, ar more arduous than balls. Tis populous with bone and stain, and men too straight to stoop again. And piles of solid moan, and chips of blank in boyish eyes, and scraps of prayer, and death's surprise stamped visible in stone. There's somewhere prouder over there. The trumpets tell it to the air. How different victory to him who has it, and the one who to have it, who to have had it, would have been contender to die. Now, as is pretty much always the case with Emily Dickinson, it would be easy to write this poem off as sing-songy. It would be easy to write this poem off as something which had been done before in the world of literature. But I want to take another look at that first line. My portion is defeat today. This suggests a few things. It suggests that we all have portions every day. For one, my portion is defeat today. Tomorrow it will be different. Yesterday it was different. It also, on the sort of off chance, not completely defines it this way, but leaves open to the interpretation that the only two types of day that there are are victory and defeat. If we are going to name one opposite and nothing else in the day, then it goes to reason that victory and defeat are the two choices. This makes me wonder. Emily Dickinson here, Emily Dickinson here is saying, is implying, is going out there and putting it down, that defeat is her, well, the speaker's, I should say, portion today. How often? Should defeat be the portion? How often can we be defeated? If we are defeated so often, there's a study with rats, there's a study with, I think, chimpanzees, and there's a study with, I believe, dogs, which says all of these animals play by roughhousing. And if the bigger, stronger of the two does not let the smaller, weaker of the two win at least X percentage of the time, the smaller, weaker one just stops playing the game. Is that how we shuffle off this mortal coil when that shuffling is done by design? You understand what I'm saying there. If we lose too many days in a row, by our own definition, by the way, we get to say what losing is. We get to say what winning is. If we lose too many days in a row and the big bad one, life, does not allow us to win every once in a while, do we stop playing the game? Is that how that happens? Even if so... It leaves the question, it leaves the poignant question, how often should we be defeated? 
How often should we be defeated by the day? How often should we be defeated in our work? How often should we be defeated in our goals? How often should we be defeated in our creative journeys? It's a wild sort of question, if you ask me. A lot of times, the most successful among us, it's easy to point to this in the world of science. It's easy to point to this in the world of entrepreneurship. The most successful among us fail and fail and fail and fail. The idea is the next time you fail, you don't fail quite so hard. The next time you fail, you don't fail in just the same way. The next time you fail, you are failing in a different manner than you had failed before. And if that is in fact the case with your situation that you are failing differently every time, is it still a failure? So long as you take the note at the end of the day, what it is that needs to be changed from your previous failure, is that a failure? Now, this happens with writers for sure. I only mention that because this the this channel deals with writers at some times, right? I try to work a little bit of writer stuff in all the time. It's difficult to tell with writers how often the failure occurs because you don't see the revision. You don't see the first draft of Carrie, a novel by Stephen King, which we're going to be starting reading through next month because it turns 50, but a novel which was thrown away multiple times by Stephen King the final time he threw it away, his wife Tabitha dragged it out of the trash can, wiped the cigarette butts off of it, and said, hey, no, this is good. You're finishing it, you schmuck. And he did. And now he's wrote, written more words than God. But that would be failing, wouldn't it? All of the times that he had to stop writing that novel. There's a story about James Joyce. One of his friends stumbled upon him at noon some day, and he was in utter languish. James Joyce just flopped about, and his friend says to him, James, what's wrong? And James says to him, well, I wrote today. His friend says, well, good, that's a good thing. How many words did you get? And James Joyce replies, I got six words. Well, James, that's a stunning pace for you. You don't often get that many words. Now, what is the problem? And James Joyce replies, finally, well, I've got the words. Now I have to figure out in what order they go. He's still trucking along. He wrote Ulysses, right? James Joyce wrote Ulysses. Dubliners, one of the greatest short story collections I've ever read. I don't mean best, I mean greatest. Not many of those short stories were particularly pleasing. Pardon me, I've already taken my sleeping pills, so I'm a little bit out of it if you can't tell. The um, idea of this defeat, despite the fact that you have outperformed your normal goal, You've written six words, you don't know what order they're in, but normally you go home having written three words. This is, um, in my opinion, someone forcing themselves to lose. You get to set the definition for loss in your own life. Our speaker here says my portion is defeat today, a paler luck than victory. Our speaker here has decided to stop there. We have the defeat. We will move on. But it will not be all that comfortable. We have the defeat, and so long as we learn from it, tomorrow will be a better day. 
That's all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here on the channel, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button. Literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel. Um, there's poetry every Mondays. I'm working towards Wednesdays being short stories and Thursday or Friday being novels. That is all I have for this one, and I hope to see you for the next one. Get out.